Hi YouTube. So today we'll be looking at red, white, and royal blue. Which was better, the book or the movie? So I recently started this book uh, while I was in Florida, which I was for like my harmonizing video. The Earth Against the World. It was great. Started a book club with my friends. We all read it and we got together to watch the movie. So I have a lot to say about it. So let's start with the book. I thought the book was pretty great. I think the narration style is interesting because instead of starting like a... It's a third person point of view, but it's written in like almost like we're in the brain of the main character who is Alex. Once you get used to it though, it is a pretty fun and quick read. It's mostly positive in the story until it gets a bit anxiety inducing later on, which if you watch the movie or read the book, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. The book itself is an enemies to lover-esque story, right? We all kind of know that. For the first hundred or so pages of the book, they are enemies and they talk about it so much. And the, the book is 400 pages. So that's like a quarter of the book where they're like angry at each other. And he's like struggling with how much he hates him, but really like he loves him, but he doesn't know, you know? But in the movie, they kind of skip that whole part. Uh, if I had to like summarize the whole comparing the book to the movie in one sentence, I would say that it's two young guys who are figuring themselves out in the public eye, enemies to lovers style. That's what I would say for the book. And for the movie, I would say it's two best bros falling in love with each other. <laughs> I just, they cut out so many important bits from the book, which I felt like, I felt like in the movie, what is it, maybe like five minutes where they're enemies, like as soon as they start seeing each other, when, when Zara makes the plan that Henry and Alex should start seeing each other, immediately during the first interview, they're already like happy and whatever. But in the book, like they're still angry at each other and it takes a while and you see it slowly developing. And one of the most crucial scenes of this is when Alex sees Henry in the kitchen just as a normal guy, which they actually filmed that scene for the movie, but then cut it out and released it as an extra scene. Nora, not even Meryl Streep could pretend to like Henry. Which just doesn't make sense because it would have actually helped understand, it would have made him more enemies to lovers because I feel like the movie was really not enemies to lovers. It was basically best friends to lovers. Like there was no enemies part, you know, it just went so quick. If you didn't know that they were supposed to be like mortal enemies, when you watch the movie, you would be like, oh, like they just, I don't know, they're, they're friends that are a bit passive aggressive with each other. Like it didn't give enemies, you know? Play nice. Okay, so that's for, I guess, the beginning part, which is like the enemies part. Then going towards the middle of the movie, middle of the book, I'd say everything was pretty well respected. There isn't too much that I was missing in the movie, you know, like the sex was there, it was great. <laughs> and everything else was pretty good. So I'm happy about that. The book also really picks up here. I especially really enjoyed the emails that were written in the book. I feel like they're so wonderful and make me wish that I could have emails like that one day. <laughs> Yeah, I actually loved what they did for the movie with that, with the texting parts and the email parts where they're like in the same room, but they're not really in the same room. I hate the tie you're wearing in Vogue. It's so boring. What do you have against color anyway? Gray is a color, thank you. I really enjoyed that. Uh, very nicely produced, directed. Not sure what the right word is, but good job. <laughs> After that, we get to our first kind of conflict in the movie, which is that their emails are leaked, the pictures are leaked, but I was like watching the movie and remembering how in the book it was so serious. It was like at least like 15 pages straight of like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Like there was so much anxiety, but in the movie, I don't know if it was just me, but I mean, also my friends, we did not feel that like there was like, oh, their emails were leaked, but like there was no showing of the emails being leaked, like on some news article or whatever. There was no pictures of them shown that were leaked. There was specific images for in the book that were referenced that were leaked and all the emails were leaked and people were reading them. But in the movie, it's like a 30 second thing. We're like, oh, Henry wakes up. Oh, all your emails have been leaked. All your pictures have been leaked. Okay. Then Alex does his speech of, of being boyfriends with Henry, but in the book, they're together when they do that speech. And there's a whole part of it before that speech happens. Like the part where Alex Storms Kensington Palace to speak to Henry happens before the interview in the book and they do the interview together in the book or like the, the, the announcement, you know, but in the movie, the announcement happens first without Alex even having spoken to Henry at all. And then he just shows up at the palace. No fuss. They have their little cute scene, which everyone loves the, oh, if you want me to leave, you have to tell me to leave cute. 
But then like, you're gonna tell me that after having this huge argument or, or fight scene, whatever, or like this, wow, like we're gonna be together moment, you know? Henry's just like, hold that thought. Let's walk 30 minutes to a museum in absolute silence and walk to my favorite room. What? <laughs> That is not what happens in the book. In the book, right after their little uh, stay with me or leave thing, they actually have great passionate sex and everyone is pissed that they didn't include that, including me. Just, that was bad, that was bad. And then they talked and then they went to the museum because Henry explained that the guards leave a key for him because they know that he likes going. But in the movie, it's just like, they fight and then there's a silence and then they walk to the museum. I. I feel like for someone who hasn't read the book, maybe seeing that was like kind of normal, but if you really think about it, it doesn't really make sense. <laughs> like, okay, now we're here, now we're there. Like, yeah, but you guys were just fighting and not talking and then you left. Like Henry left in the middle of a conversation to bring him to the museum. Like just, just no, just no, just no. And then the book and the movie kind of, they both end pretty nicely. They both end similarly. There's not too much of a big difference. One other thing that is really important that they took out is June. Where's June? My disappointment is immeasurable. We were sitting down to start watching the movie. One of my friends told me that June was removed from the story which I guess makes sense because she is like the least involved in the plot points, but like she's there to, outside of the plot points, she makes Alex realize so many things and she's there to like bring the group dynamic together and she's such a great, great character, like super heartwarming and wholesome and helpful. And she helps Alex come to terms with his bisexuality, which we like barely see in the movie. She helps just Henry, she helps Nora. It's just, just she's just a great character and she's the one who helps writing the speeches and everything. And her and Alex have this super great brother-sister dynamic in the book where like they sit down together all the time and read magazines and play games together. It's just like so sad that they took her out of the movie and Nora was barely in it. But I mean, at the end of the day, I guess it was a story more about the two guys. So whatever, you like cut some people out, but it's still pretty sad. What can you do? So overall, I'd rate the book a 8.5. My favorite part were the chapters where it was just emails. I super enjoyed that. I felt like it was different to normal books. And also I love the contrast in their writing styles. Like Alex and Henry, they both write so differently. And it was so like, you know, it was making me long for something like that. It was great, it was great. And uh, I'd give it an 8.5 on 10. That's my rating for this book. And for the movie, I, the thing is that I can't compare it on its own. I can't give it a proper rating on its own because I'm biased because I read the book, but I don't think it was terrible. It was just, it was an okay movie. I'd give it a seven on 10. That's my rating for the movie. I would definitely say to read this if you enjoyed the movie because you will like it much more, I promise. So yeah, that was the book for this month. Our next book is The Red Queen, which I might do a re review for when we're done in October, because we're doing two months for this book. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you guys like this sort of thing. I'm trying to do a lot of different stuff on this channel. So well, mostly like reviewing different sorts of media, like TV shows, movies, books now, and also writing music. That's the main vibe. <laughs> Let me know what you guys think and uh, have a great day. Bye.